The learning environment I am going to talk about is the grade nine essentials map course that I taught last year. I will be teaching the same course again this year. One of the major challenges in that class is keeping them engaged so they are not always on their technology, playing games, watching videos, and communicating with their friends. Another of the major challenges was in dealing with the students' gaps in understanding. I use a blended paperless classroom. I spend time with the students face-to-face -face and also online. The first half of the class, I had the students work on problems on various Google documents I had uploaded on Google Classroom from York Region District School Board's Grade 9 Essential Math e-learning course on D2L. Knowledge construction and not reproduction was emphasized. Students were encouraged not to look for the one right answer and try different approaches. This open-ended context-specific problem was challenging for the students. Students worked in small groups as self-directed, active investigators and problem solvers. I adopted, I adopted the role as facilitator of learning, guiding the learning process and promoting uh, environment of inquiry. Multiple perspectives and representation of concepts and content were presented and encouraged. The second half of the class, I would have the students play knowledge hook game show to review the, the material that they learned during the first half of the class. Game show is an online application where quizzes are presented in a game show type format. With word problems, I would provide text show or oral prompts by emphasizing keywords and or figures. Goals and objectives were derived by a negotiation with the student and myself. Activities, opportunities, tools, and environments were provided to encourage metacognition, self-analysis, regulation, reflection, and awareness. Students were advised to provide feedback on another student's post on Google Classroom. An evaluation was given for each unit and a rubric was provided for all the culminating activities in the final ISU. What went right? I had the students play game show to review and practice the concepts that they learned from the first half of the class. 70% of learning is from experience and practice. 20% of learning is through other people. 10% of learning is formal. We forget 50% in an hour if we don't practice. The students were more on task when they were playing game show where every student completed the questions, unlike the first half of the class where they worked on the online questions. Adaptive characteristics enable learners to generate flow. The learner is fully immersed in the game and does not rely on meta cognitively induced strategies of self-regulation to remain on task. When the students had difficulties with questions, I provided them with prompts. I would emphasize keywords and numbers. Players typically stop playing games because they become bored of easy tasks or tasks that are excessively difficult that it frustrates them. The challenge for the game is to maintain a flow state, creating a sense of winning and challenge. The prompts help create this flow stage where the students would not stop playing or just guess at the answers. The students usually completed all the questions playing the games because there was peer pressure involved. Playing a game together actually builds up bonds and trust and cooperation. The students do not want to disappoint the other students by either not attempting the question or quitting the game, so they attempted every question. Motivation to play also comes from the motivation to win. The students kept track of who was winning and how they were doing compared to the other students. Game show also incorporates retrieval practice or calling information to mind. Retrieval practice boosts learning by focusing on pulling information out of students' heads rather than cramming information. Through the act of retrieval, our memory for that information is strengthened and forgetting is less likely to occur. I used rubrics for my evaluations, which improves students' end products and therefore increase learning because they understand how they will be evaluated and can prepare accordingly. 
How might I structure the learning environment differently? In my class, I need to emphasize the process and not the product, how the student arrives at a particular answer and not the retrieval of an objectively true solution. It is what is important. With gamification, the emphasis is on getting the right answer. When a student was working on the knowledge of missions questions I assigned him, he would keep guessing until he got the right answer in order to collect badges and move up the leaderboard. I would increase the amount of time in my day focused on discovery learning and less on gamification. With this type of approach, students may be more likely to remember concepts and knowledge discovered on their own in contrast to a transmissionist model. I need to use more flex flexible and simpler tools for online learning. This would involve integrating from mobile and social media tools give, to give more power to student content creation and management so they can develop the skill of knowledge management among other skills. This collage of tools would be assembled according to the type of learning that will best enable students to learn skills as well as to access and reproduce content. Thanks for listening to my presentation. I will now answer any questions you may have.